I look in the mirror and just see a black face. Where are my eyes? Where is my nose? My mouth? I try to scream. Can't hear myself. Who am I? What can I do? Why am I always coming back here? He looks out the window, he sees a peaceful city, so quiet and calm and riddled with light. It is so close, it feels like an inch. His hands cannot grasp it, not even a pinch. Then he looks back to see a reflection in the window. He wished he was free to fly like a sparrow. Who am I? I'm a young man in trouble. Now my life is just a struggle because I'm in jail and my family is at home. Who am I? A young man just chilling in a place where he know he doesn't belong. Who am I? The system, it doesn't work. People's mentality gets worse and worse. Adapts to jail make you feel like dirt. The system, it really hurts. My name is Dale Davis and I'm executive director of the New York State Literary Center. I founded the New York State Literary Center in 1979. and I was one of the founders of New York State Poets in the schools earlier. We did a lot of work in suburban schools, some in urban schools. Then I got into alternative education. Someone in the superintendent's office at that time invited me for lunch. We had lunch and he was suggesting that I might meet with Margaret Porter to talk about working um, in the jails. The jail was not something I'd ever considered. And then when I came out, I heard Akon's locked up on the radio. And I, I knew that was number one, like, yeah, on the billboard. And I thought, yes, <laughs> speaking. I'm Margaret Porter. I'm the program administrator for youth and justice programs for the Rochester City School District. A big piece of my work does involve youth that have been separated from the mainstream in education. Dale Davis came to my office, oh, some years ago, maybe six years ago now and talked about um, what the New York State Literary Center was doing and some of what she had done. And we talked about partnering based on the philosophy that we were moving towards in education with our kids in incarcerated education and seeing a real opportunity to engage them. My pencil expresses my feelings. Sometimes I'm sad, sometimes I'm frustrated, and most times I'm chilling. My pencil talks about my thoughts. It helps my mind and my brain talk. My pencil lets me and others know that my mind is strong. My pencil helps me as I'm sitting in jail waiting for my freedom. What would I do without my pencil? Something that I uh, am in charge of with some other people is the youth development program that we have here. And I really enjoy that. Um, you know, it's enjoyable at times and sometimes it's not enjoyable because you are dealing with a, sadly, a, a, a male who's incarcerated at the age of 16 to 18. But the enjoyable part is, is that some of these kids are, are really gifted kids and are really decent people deep down inside. And the enjoyable part is, is getting to see that part of them. Just the other day I was in Dale's class, I think maybe it was last Friday, and we had, she had two students in there and we both sat there actually and asked the two inmates. Uh, I specifically asked them if you were this, like letting your guard down and expressing your feelings back in the cell block, what would happen to you? And they said that they would be considered a punk or soft, and, and it wouldn't be looked upon well amongst their 50 other peers. What I think happens is through this program is you get to see the person that's really there, and sometimes, unfortunately, um, their environment here doesn't allow them to express themselves openly or on the street. Some of the students that are going to the art program, uh, they come back and they're, they're eager to show what they're working on and uh, they want to talk about it. You know, uh, I believe the latest thing that they're working on is a, a mural that's going to be painted on the doors up there. And uh, they were asking input from myself and, and my partner as to what we thought about it. And, and it was interesting, it was good, and there was definitely excitement. They, uh, they really felt a sense of purpose in what they were doing. The arts free you. They force you to think, but they also, um, again, with our population, they haven't expressed themselves at all. 
really this writing group to me is like behind walls freedom. It's like you can just express your freedom on paper. Writing group, it's like a sanctuary for words. I learn people from a different side of them, from their writing. Right. The writing is really like seeing the person inside out. The words come from inside out. It's like a way to vent out your emotions because you don't talk about a lot of stuff with the people back there. But in writing, you could express it all. The thing I've noticed is there's a lot of talent and it seems like they have a hard time focusing that, but when they get something like this, uh, this mural for instance, they're able to pour themselves into it and they really focus. A lot of, when they do come up here, and part of the expression, they, they're kind of smoking and joking. Uh, a lot of laughing going on. And, and then when they do go back there and they do work with Miss Davis, they come out and they're a little more introspective. They come out, they're a little quieter. They come out and you can see that the wheels are turning. A lot of the kids that we see in our jail, we house roughly anywhere from 100 to 120 juveniles in our facility. Um, they failed in traditional school settings. Um, not necessarily because they, they don't have the, the, uh, the intellect to do it, just because they don't have the structure, they weren't taught you know, in a structured environment uh, in their home, and uh, they don't have the support systems or, or a number of reasons. So we try to offer uh, education in a non-traditional method. You know, if we can make something click and, and something they enjoy, and at the same time teaching them you know, proper um, skills, it's a win-win. It's something, and it accomplishes something that I think the routine of school, regular schools don't, and that's to individualize what we're able to do with people, but also to give them an opportunity to do something of real high interest. You know, when we first talked about it, it was literacy in the classroom, and we started to expand the, the different kinds of arts and the different formats of arts that we've tried, and we've had a certain amount of success with each one, the mural project, the music projects, the writing projects, and things like that, have all given people the opportunity that they've never had before um, to, to, to kind of really take a look at themselves. I think the statistic is 70% of those who go to prison are completely illiterate. So if we're coming back down here, literacy has to be embedded in everything we do. And I'll often say to them, you're not stupid, you can't read and write because you didn't go to school. You can learn to do that, but your ideas are worth something. And you have to be open-minded to realize that you just can't lock the key, lock them in, and then throw them back out in society because then the system just keeps going. You have to break the chain somehow. And education, to me, honestly, is probably the easiest way to do it. The partnership was there, is there, and continues to be there. And I think it's a necessary uh, part of teaching and correcting these kids, young adults. Now we've gone through a generation where we've seen their fathers. Now we're seeing their kids. My first time I heard the word jail was when my mother told me my dad was in jail for life. This was when I was 10 years old. So how many of you have relatives that are in jail or were in jail? It's all you. Everybody through my whole teen life. Since it's only three years I've been a teenager, but I've been locked up since 12. But... How old was you when you started to locked up? 10. 10? Mm -hmm. Now they have jail cells for most ages. I fell in the hole when I was 10. I mean, one of our biggest projects this year, which has been a great resource, has been the Anne Frank Prison Diary Writing Content Program. And we're working with the Anne Frank Center USA, where the um, inmates are given a copy of Anne Frank's diary uh, and a blank diary. Uh, Anne Frank's diary is, I think it's the most widely read book in American prisons. And what I'm having them do is measure their cells as opposed to how big the attic was. It's been a couple of days since my last entry because I'm still not used to this diary thing. The commissary day was today. And this is the time we get to order noodles. This is oatmeal snacks to eat, but this is also the day a lot of extortion happens. 
I don't know, we've been, you know, locking people up in this country for 250 years and the numbers keep increasing of the number of people we lock up. We lock up more people in this country than any other country in the world. To me, we have to invest in these students. They're going out and if we want them out, and, and even if you learn a trade, you still have a mind. You still want a book. I've been here 20 years and uh, you know I've seen a lot of people come through these doors multiple times and I firmly believe that if the person has no education or is limited in their education, that's a recipe for recidivism. They're going to come back. Uh, I think we definitely need more programs um, around the state, around the country, like what we do here. You could send your, your child to a pretty good school for less money than what you can send them to jail for. And it's, a, it's an irony that is hard to come to grips with. Today is a world against all odds, a world of ups and downs to make it in this life. Life is a struggle to make a bundle. I'm lonely in my cell at night. All I can do is write. Today is January 20th. I don't know how many days I've been here, but all I know is that it has been too many days. I feel like an animal right now, being locked down all day. This here is not for a person, really. This isn't for anyone.